Okay, so here's a quick idea I have in mind on how to fit um, a manual cooling fan switch for the Triumph Sprint ST1050. Um, for most other bikes, it uses a lucky like actual, it's kind of like a thermostat switch in here. This thing's suicidal, it's like a paratrooper, one second. Yeah, there's like a switch in here, it's kind of like a thermostat switch. Once it senses enough heat, it completes the circuit and allows the fan to come on, hence the cooling. Um, easier to put a manual fan switch on, and the reason a lot of people put a manual fan switch on is obviously when you're coming into hot days or riding through town, slow moving traffic filtering or maybe doing off road things like that the bike can get hot quite quickly and sometimes the the switch itself doesn't bring the fan on its fan on soon enough to keep the bike cool enough and it can overheat if you don't do it soon enough um i've done it to my vfr that was quite simple and easy to do um, this customer's asked me to do it to his and I thought it would be the same thing unfortunately on the Sprint ST there isn't the um, actual like, fan switch inside there it's not in there and um, it's basically controlled a different way the pretty much via the ECU the ECU decides when the fan switch comes on and do it, basically how it does that is there still kind of a switch side, but it's the ECU that's doing the switching. Um, first off, you want to identify which one's your fan relay, which is this one. You've got black and uh, yellow wire here. Let me move it over so you might be able to see it better. But yeah, you've got a black and yellow wire here, and that's coming from your ECU. That's set. Uh, that'll be a signal, a power from your ECU, send the signal to complete the circuit. Well, complete the relay switch to allow the power to come through. The other side is essentially ground. These are the two wires, so you want to identify which one's one first, which one's what first. Because um, obviously one is going straight from your fuse block down here to here. So obviously first thing you want to do is identify which one that is. Easy to do, nice multimeter, continuity test. And you go to the brown and pink that's in there. There's two, but the thinner gauge one, I mean, they're both essentially connected through the seam, but I, it's one of them two. There's a lot of seam wires on this wire and loom, which is a problem. But then you work out, just tapping away, which one it is. There we go, that's the one it is. That's power. Hence why I've taped it. And the other side, I've already re taped this, but that, same again power to your fan itself which if I can get it in there it's right down in this it's just right down in a recess so it's hard to get and it, there it is Let's see if it in. there we go it shows that that wire is the one going to the fan so now that we know that it's easy enough to actually put a fan switch in here, bypass the ECU's decisions and do it ourselves. And all you have to do, these two wires here and basically splice into these two, wire running up to your handlebars or your side, wherever you want the switch to be, put the switch in there and if you flick the two switches it would join these two, these two terminals which is power from your fuse box and your fans and your fan itself completing the circuit bypassing these two giving you power um, I'm yet to test this completely yet because the bikes having a full electrical overhaul full of grease etc anyone has been watching the videos has seen the state that these connectors are in and the further I dig the worse they're getting but every single one's having to be done once the bikes back together and it's all working again we can actually test this out um, methods for anyone wanting to do it, the best way I would say uh, two ways, you can either use a Wago, a three point Wago put that there, so obviously you cut this Wago in, Wago in, and then your other wire to your switch going in 
and you do the same for the other side or a nice cleaner method which I probably will do is if you've got if you can get the replacement ones of these the actual terminals themselves you want to cut there cut there put a new terminal in with another wire coming out and the same for this end so you save any extra connectors and what's here it's all in there nice and clean Right, so once it's all together I can put a video up of anyone testing it right, and see if it actually works but yeah that's for anyone with a Triumph that wants their manual fan switch not as difficult to do as it first seems out I mean when I first looked at it it looked tricky but no quite easy and simple to do once you know which wire does what and you know there's a bit of electrics it's easy to bypass these things but yeah that's the same for that one. Uh, the other one here I have in mind, same with these Triumphs. If I'm not sure how many people might know about it, but the Triumphs have kind of um, a safety circuit, like a safety bypass circuit, or a safety circuit in the starter system. If it detects a voltage, or detects a voltage from the battery that's too low, this circuit kicks in and stops you from starting the bike essentially the bike will turn over three times and it will stop right there uh, whereas most bikes you just keep turning it will try turning and turning or it might even click 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 now this system on the triumphs and on pretty much all triumphs as far as i know has this safety circuit to bypass that one quite easy as well you need to first identify the starter motor relay the start circuit relay which is this one here see if anyone asks how I'm doing this I've got a wire uh, I've got my trusty Haynes and if you look further down I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up obviously it's dark at night you have a black blue purple red white and a yellow and I'm going to say brown okay this yellow brown wire here is the trouble causer wrong with it and corroded no bad connectors or anything but basically this is the one detecting the voltage well this is part of that circuit that safety circuit i was on about in this is in my idea and i believe it works we yet to test it but basically you have to take this wire and just attach it to ground it is simply as best way i can put it is you've got a switch side coming in Wants me to warn me. But yeah, essentially you have a switch side and a power side. On relays there's a switch side to control the relay and then the power side that the relay bridges when the switch when the relay is active. Um and basically the ground side of the switch side, so not the the bit sending power to the starter motor itself or completing the starter relay. The brown one is meant to go to ground. I believe is meant to essentially just go off the ground or should ground out. Obviously power comes in and this should ground out. Well, it should eventually fall off the ground. And what you need to do or what happens is this brown yellow goes to the, your ECU. And this is what's detecting or what or your ECU is reading the voltage. And basically if it detects it too low, it'll block this wire's path to the ground so it stops this relay in its path but if you take that wire put it to ground then when you do have a low battery or anything like that because sometimes even when you got a low battery it still might crank but, you see, but this system will tell you no regardless it's a no but yes I do believe it's the brown yellow wire that to ground and that'll stop it Whereas previously, before, it sends the power. I mean, one second, I believe it's... Yes, it is, yes, yes. The red-white is coming from your starter switch up there, so when you press your starter button, that's where power's being sent. Well, this is where power's coming through following your starter button. And it will go in here and it should bridge these two, the black and the blue. Yep, it should actually bridge these two to give them power. And 
Same with the purple, it should bridge that one. But same with the brown yellow as well. If that brown yellow goes to your, well, that brown yellow goes to your ECU, ECU detects low voltage and blocks that path to ground. Obviously, the ECU will be directing that that thing to ground through some kind of internal switch or something. Um, bit complex on that one. Um, as I said, we're all going to wait till it's back together to do all these little modifications. And I can tell you a bit more then, but for now, we'll get back to cleaning some of these connectors. I mean, can show you a quick update on where we are? <coughs> um, I managed to do this one. This is his starter switch side. I think people have seen me do that on some videos. Some of them are really bad. I've had some come out and they're just green inside or really caked in. Um, his heated handle grips weren't working. Um, that is these little switches here. Um, if I just pull the other one, I've done one, I haven't done the other yet. Um, I have the camera, I can just pick these up. But in here, it was just an absolute caked up mess inside. So it was no wonder it weren't working. I mean, he said it was this handle grip this side, it wasn't working. And the switch that I've, well, the last connector I cleaned was completely bad, even the positive line. There was no way that was making contact, so this is why doing these jobs are very important. And same again, I've still got some to do. Still a few cakes in grease, but there's not many connectors left now. Essentially, it's just these two, there's two connectors there. I think there's a... 12 connector block in total there are six connector total in 12 and there's one with I think about 10 20 connectors in there as well in total so that's a bit of a job but they're the last big ones to do apart from that it's just one or two little ones little connectors here and there and a charging system and it should be back together again and I'll try and get another video up soon where we are uh, stripping down here, these you see these burnt connectors down here that they've shown. We need to try and strip them. Have a look at them. <sighs> Same with Gal is fuel level sender. I've done continuity tests on all the wiring that all passes, all wiring going to your dash passes. So all's looking good and all's looking positive on this one. <sighs> Till next time.